Good morning, everyone. Thank you to Mr. Todd and Mr. Reinhold. And now it's uh, time to jump into the real question and hopefully finding the answer of how to create a smart knowledge city. So I would like to invite our first panelists to take their seats here. Uh, we have Mr. Andreas Brandner, who is the founder and managing director of Knowledge Management in Vienna and Knowledge for Development Partnership. He is a pioneer in knowledge management and also initiator of, so of, sorry, of Vienna Knowledge City. Then we have Judith Borsbom. She is senior researcher in the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. Her presentation is basically the basis for our afternoon session because she is going to present to us how to develop a smart city with the guidance package. We also have Mr. Francesco Liu, who is advisor to the Italian Minister of Research, Universities and Education. He will tell us more about the paradox of the smart cities and how we can develop further in the future of the cities. Then we have Mr. Trevor Gibson from Opportunity Peterborough. He is Smart Cities Leadership and Development Manager and he will share with us the experience of Peterborough Great Britain. And we have Alan Hugo, who is uh, defining himself as a connector in <laughs> one right. And he is the co-founder of uh, Creative Brink and Russell's Creative. And last but not least, we have Georgi Yogi with his first presentation for today. He is from Fraunhofer Institute of Building Physics and he will tell us more about uh, urban air mobility in the context of smart cities, a very important element. Of course, myself, my name is Vera Nikolova. I'm an expert strategy development at Cluster South Knowledge Cities. And once again, on behalf of our team and myself, I welcome you here today. I hope we'll have a fruitful work, especially in the afternoon interactive session, and hopefully we can do something to contribute to the development of Sofia once again, not only as a smart, but also a knowledge city. That's why we start with the first presentation about the knowledge city and the presentation of Mr. Brunner. So I will hold the presentation. Thank you very much, and uh, well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues of the cluster, dear colleagues on the podium. It's my pleasure to be here in Sofia. Um, I have uh, spent the last year quite some time in developing countries. That's also one of the reasons why I'm talking about knowledge for development. And it's good to be back in a place where I don't have to explain that Austria is not Australia. <laughs> but uh, at least it's... Uh, it's uh, changing a little bit because um, African countries, for instance, know sometimes Vienna better than Austria. So if I talk about Austria, they say, ah, Australia. But if I talk about Vienna, ah, the UN, and they somehow realize that Vienna is a place in Europe. So this just shows that the identity of um, societies is um, more and more focused on cities and uh, that's also where my passion is. I'm talking today uh, about knowledge for development and to be honest, this is a, a wide field and I think I'm opening this conference with this wider perspective and we will have a lot of opportunities to get more into the details of knowledge and smart cities. And um, I want also to invite you to share some experiences from the end. When we talk about development, usually, at least, since 2015, we talk about development from the perspective of the sustainable development goals of the United Nations. The Agenda 2030 of the UN has defined 17 development goals uh, that include low poverty, climate, energy, and, and so much more as you can see here. And um, the question is, what is the, what is the knowledge aspect in the Sustainable Development Goals? 
And uh, there is one relevant uh, goal, which is the last one. It's the 17th of the 17 goals, and it's called Partnerships for the Goals. And it's about sharing knowledge, sharing technologies, sharing experiences, insights, in order to achieve all these goals. So, whatever we want to achieve, we need knowledge to be successful. And um, should this be climate or education or human rights or whatever, in every aspect we have these aspects of accessing knowledge, applying knowledge in our practice, not losing the knowledge that we already have. And um, we can call this topic knowledge management, because if you don't care for the knowledge that we need, we will not have it, we will lose it, we will not be as effective in our operations. That is why in 2016, not 15, after the SDGs, we started an initiative to come together and share our views on knowledge in, in the field of sustainable development. We invited representatives of a wide range of UN organizations, countries, stakeholder groups to formulate a joint agenda knowledge for development where we address the issues of uh, knowledge in society and if we can manage uh, on a governmental, on a global level uh, knowledge better in societies all the initiatives, all the organizations, all the sector uh, developments will be more effective. Let's just take the very, let's say, prominent issue of migration. Migration is not an issue for smart cities alone or for climate or energy or whatever. But migration is a societal issue. And if we can make good use of the knowledge of migrants, then we uh, can profit, we can gain from it. If on the other side we see migrants only as, let's say, a social burden, and uh, we want to, let's say, minimize it and um, kick them out or send them back, then we lose this potential. On the other side, if we um, do not attract the people that we already have in countries, they will go away. And I think Bulgaria is quite a good example, or a negative example in this case, of losing the intelligence. I think um, in the last decades you have lost almost uh, a quarter of your population. And well, you may think about which part of the, of the society is leaving. Maybe those that are entrepreneurial enough to go and take some risks, try something new. So, Many, many issues. Uh, migration is really only one of the many, many parts that, that you can talk about uh, knowledge has been put together in a, a gentle knowledge for development. And uh, we have formulated 14 knowledge development goals, starting from uh, inclusive and diverse pluralistic knowledge societies. We don't want to promote knowledge elites, they are there already, we don't have to support them anymore. But uh, the critical momentum is the avoidance of knowledge divide. And if we look into the world, we can see that, I'm coming just now from Gambia, West Africa, 50% are illiterate and don't have electricity. You can imagine what kind of benefits they are making out of, let's say, the, the internet, the society, and uh, the connected world. Um, the, the second goal, and I don't want to explain all of them, but the second goal is that we want to make people successful in their lives, to support them in their self-determinedness and their ability to create their own future, not to depend on societies and even companies and others to give them jobs, to give them opportunities here. They have to create their own opportunities and knowledge is the main resource to create one's own future and to be competent citizen and decision maker. Strengthening local knowledge ecosystem means that Bulgaria and Sofia have to create their own knowledge strategies and not do whatever the European Union say, decides to be an active and self-determined partner. And this can only be possible through local knowledge partnerships. Knowledge is a resource that is distributed in society. There is not one single institution in society that has all the knowledge. And I think the European Innovation Partnerships are a very good uh, example for how we can make policies in any kind of field 
um, on a in a participatory way. And such partnerships we need for knowledge and for knowledge cities and for smart knowledge cities and that's why I really appreciate this initiative. And the fifth, and this is the final one that I will address here, is about knowledge cities and rural urban linkages. Because evidently knowledge uh, uh, cities are traditionally the hub, the network, uh, the, the node for synapses for the, for the knowledge in a society. And the more and more we get knowledge focused in a society, the more and more cities uh, get important. So, you can see all these goals here, but I will continue. Um, addressing this issue, what is a knowledge city? Because we are talking a lot today about smart cities, but knowledge cities somehow evidently make a difference. We say that knowledge cities are those cities that create their social and economic and societal benefit from knowledge, from innovation, from learning, from competences, and not uh, from uh, natural resources. But knowledge cities that, that, that really develop this profile strategically should have a strong identity as a knowledge city and follow a strategic approach and have their structures and platforms and partnerships to advance this profile. They have to include the citizens to really understand why is knowledge important for me as a citizen? How can I contribute to it? What is my role in it? And also, of course, uh, companies and uh, and other stakeholders. It has to be attractive as a city. I think this is one of the strengths already of Vienna as one of the most livable cities. Maybe you have heard about these rankings. Vienna is uh, recognized as one of the most livable cities in the world. This makes it attractive for people to come and to work, to study, to research, etc. And finally, uh, it has to be inclusive and provide equal opportunities. I have nominated, uh, together with a group of people, uh, Vienna as the most admired knowledge city in the world, and luckily we uh, won this award. Like many others, we have already been uh, recognized as the smart knowledge city, most liberal knowledge city, uh, and we have so many. And I would like to jump through a few elements that we used for our application, showing how, how wide the spectrum is. You know, we started with our identity and we thought that we should present them to be aware of our intelligent people, of our brains that have left the country and that also have come to the country and of course those that have stayed there. And uh, we have an amazing amount of people that have uh, shaped the history and the science of knowledge. Maybe the most important, if maybe not the most important, most best well known is Peter Drucker, a person that has left uh, Austria and has uh, written a lot about knowledge management and knowledge societies. Uh, we initiated an initiative to create an agenda knowledge already 10 years ago and uh, formulated this um, on a very participatory way. We have created an artwork, the columns of knowledge that is positioned in the center of Vienna. Uh, we have um, <coughs> created a um, a leaflet that is uh, including all the statements from different points of views, academic partners, business people, government, NGOs. So a really very comprehensive view on what makes Vienna a knowledge city. We have the, the personal leadership of the mayors. I put the, the former mayor here because he was the one who has put this agenda on the on the media and uh, on his agenda, so he's really a strong supporter for Vienna as a knowledge city. We established formally uh, as, a, as a, an identity the knowledge partnership, an institution to discuss the issues of knowledge city. We are meeting regularly. Just last week we had the 25th meeting of the knowledge partnership to give uh, let's say inputs and, uh, and uh, support the, the city and start projects, programs, and connect all the stakeholders. We have established knowledge management as a management discipline in a wide range of institutions, uh, starting from the municipality of Vienna, the federal institutions, or the, the scientific institutions like the 
Academy of Sciences. We have partnerships with the Chamber of Commerce to present it in companies. We have uh, one of the first educational institutions, the Knowledge Management Academy. Uh, we have um, also very close relationships to the UN in the field of knowledge uh, management. And this international network is very important for us because only in the United Nations we have thousands of experts coming from all over the world bringing their knowledge and it is an objective for us to capture this knowledge and build relations to all the, uh, the countries that are in Vienna, which is almost all countries. We even addressed some very untechnical uh, elements of our identity and uh, you may laugh, but uh, the coffee houses in Vienna are traditionally an extremely important place to meet and to discuss, to share knowledge. It's a, it's a cultural ground for us uh, to share knowledge because not everything can be shared on your smartphone. We also have to combine personal combination, uh, personal meetings and uh, knowledge sharing with pleasure. Pleasure is quite a substantial part and if you, last, last year when we had our conference, uh, a colleague said smart uh, has one aspect, intelligent, but also beautiful. And uh, if we can make cities beautiful and enjoyable and intelligent, then it's uh, a good combination. Not to forget, of course, the, the businesses, the knowledge industries, the, the companies that are based on knowledge and those that have knowledge as their service, like consultants, training organizations, technology providers, and so on, is the, the fastest growing uh, sector in our economy in Vienna, and also by number of companies, it's the biggest one. And the city of Vienna has um, quite comprehensive set of activities to support them, to make their lives easier and to um, also internationalize them because smart, uh, because the knowledge, uh, knowledge based companies are often very small and specifically for them exporting is, is really a challenge. We have created spaces, physical spaces, that's uh, an important issue for city develop, urban development because People should not only sit in their homes or in their offices and don't look at the world through their smartphones. They should also meet in the physical world and uh, you need to create spaces for that. And finally, yes, we also have created our e-government initiatives and open data programs. We have been uh, awarded with uh, some global awards and we have yes, a lot of plans for the future. I don't want to go into it. Detail. But <clears throat> to close this year, the digital roadmap was created uh, with uh, quite a number of experts with 50 workshops, e participation. It's a wide process. Vienna has, above all, one strength that is the balancing of everything. We are maybe not the economically strongest city in the world. I mean, London is much more important in terms of economic power. But what about social inclusion in London? Huh? There are some problems. So, in every aspect, you have somebody who might be better. But altogether, we are human beings with different aspects and different facets. And we want to have a holistic well being. And if we have uh, much money but we don't have air to breath and we have no transportation to come to the conference then, are we satisfied? So, balancing is important and this requires participation of all the stakeholders that represent the different aspects of society. And this is my recommendation for Sofia as a knowledge city. Follow a, a strategic and participatory way. I think that the process that uh, will be introduced today is a very good one. Participate actively in it, in it. Otherwise, others, other people will take your decisions. And uh, that's my that's the end of my presentation. Uh, this was last week, uh, so I hope that very soon we will have a Sofia Knowledge Week to uh, let's say continue this journey. And um, I wish you all a good uh, conference and fruitful discussions. Thank you.
Village City very soon, and we will certainly organize, hopefully next year, I don't make promises, but hopefully some Vienna Village uh, week.